Hello Polygoners! I am Shaft, you are watching Polygon Gaming, and we might as well call this series Zerg Herd Coaching Sessions, because yet again we've got my buddy here in the blue Zerg Chunks. From our Facebook group, you can check it out, link is in the description. But he is uh, wanting to work on what we are uh, now dubbing the Snoop Dogg composition. A Ling, Baneling, Corruptor, and this is very, very poorly executed, I'm going to let you know up front. But what I am very, very happy about is that Jay actually has learned quite a bit of the things we've been talking about, and now he's getting into the late game scenarios, which, of course, having never been here before, he is a little unaccustomed to. So let's help him get accustomed to that, help you guys get accustomed to that, and if you have any comments about things maybe I missed in this game, feel free to leave them in the comments below, because I am going to be zoning in very specifically on a couple of key tactics in an effort not to overwhelm him. In any case, I think we should go ahead and get right into this game, because at this point, we've got the Reaper showing up. Reaper showing up, that's fairly, you know, that, that that's a thing that happens, right? So, I don't want to spend too much time focused on this. What I do want to focus on is this clock right here. It says 2 minutes and 37 seconds. So, within the next 20 seconds or so, Zerkard has to make a decision. And either decision is fine, but I think he needs to commit to one and play the game out from there. Here are the two decisions. You can begin going for a faster layer and use the faster technology to get access to a unit that is going to make holding a third very, very easy. Alternatively, you can neglect taking as many gas early, steamroll an economy, and get a very, very fast three base using nothing but low tier gas cheap units to defend this. And either one is valid and can go into the mid game in a very strong position with the same mid game compositions. But I think it's important to commit to one and stay true to it. So let's see what Zerherd uh, decides to do here. <laughs> nice little zone control here with the Langs. Gonna lose one Lang, the Queen, and repelling the Reaper. We've talked uh, extreme lengths about how Queens and Langs interact with the Reapers. So we'll be zoning right on through. But at this moment, it is now three minutes. If we were going to see the Sauron style Zerg, that base should be taken. This third base should have been taken about 10 seconds ago. If it is going to be a technological mid game based army where he's using the tech to keep his uh, third base alive, then we should be seeing the adding on of a certain gas at this point. And in this case, we're actually not seeing either one. Take a look at this mineral count and this gas count. So we've gone for the metabolic boost, which is straight up 100 gas, boom, right off the top. Now at that point, we have to make a decision. Do we pull the gas, the workers out of this gas, and go saturate the natural, or do we continue to mine gas? And in this case, we clearly continue to mine gas. We could mine gas with one worker, we could mine gas with all three, and each of these has their own variations, with three workers being a very, 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 very fast tech into the mid game. And with the exception of the fact that we are floating 360 minerals, which, roughly speaking, is about eight workers, in eight more workers, the Zerg would be. Um, Coming up to the, the 42 supply mark, between 34 and 42 is when you want to begin taking a second and third gas with this composition, as well as beginning to get a layer. So we see neither of these particular combinations coming out at this three minute mark. So let's see, maybe it's just a little delayed. We are talking a little lower level here. So we're seeing the pneumatized carapace, and that can be a good thing. It allows overlords to be sacrificed. However, overlords are mineral heavy. With a two base style, minerals are not the thing you have the most of, gases. So we're actually using a technology that is intended to be used by Sauron style Zergs in a composition that is rushing to mid game tech. This is a huge distraction from the goal of technology that you're trying to achieve. So we're a little bit late on the third base, but okay. A little bit late on it, and it's in a horrid position. This is not the third base the Zerg takes. This is. There's a huge number of reasons why, but mostly, look at this angle. Look at this angle. 
Look at all this drop distance. Look at the ability for Reapers to jump up here, get in here, come back down, and run your army all the way around here. Not only can Reapers do that, so can Elevator Drops. See? This is why you don't do that. So this is the third base. And then a Spore Crawler, you know, in this area, in this area, one of those two, will also protect this base. Because the idea of a drop coming along this angle, not such a good idea because there is so much of that space there. A drop coming here, very viable, so you would have a Spore Crawler somewhere around in here to just repel that back. Um, it is much easier to defend these three bases in this cluster arrangement as opposed to this. This map kind of splits in this matchup along this parallel with the Zerg taking the north and the Terran taking the south. And we got a little bit of harassment up here on the Reaper. He's definitely making usage of this little cliff we were talking about, but uh, not actually uh, using that as his escape path right now. Metabolic Boost is going to be finishing up. He doesn't want to quite die to that, but he is on the wrong side of this base for Metabolic Boost to be finishing up. However, he's got Stimpak going to be completing in the, uh, the near future. And this is characteristic of a 2-1-1 build because you saw this, saw this, the faster stem coming out of here, boom. And then boom, 2 one, 1 this is a very drop heavy style. So like we said, this is going to be a base that is easily exploited between these two and has a nice little run path for the Reapers. But now we're seeing a four minute or so layer out of Zerg Herd. We do not have a second gas. We do not have a third or fourth gas. And this third base is definitely um, not done yet. So. It's kind of like an in-between of both the Sauron style Zerg and um, the two base technology style Zerg. So I'd say specialize, pick one, commit to it. So we've got some spores being started, but this is an interesting spore crawler. Um, see how it's like so deeply tucked into this mineral line? If you have a spore crawler like right in here, right in here, most Terran are gonna use this blank space on the map to come in and be approaching from this back angle. Do you see how this right here is actually not gonna be that useful at stopping a medevac from unloading right here and then just rushing in? So just have in mind where your opponent's gonna be approaching you from. And if you can predict that, you'll be in a much, much better position. Now we do have some extra auxiliary queens that are a little bit on the late side, um, but it's okay. If you were flooding a little bit too much, your mineral count might be, like your drones on minerals might be a little bit weaker. Right now it's almost five minutes, man. You should have double this. Really, you should be somewhere between 60 and 70 workers at this point if you were doing a uh, Sauron style. Um, if you were doing a technology style, you're still a little bit behind, but not anywhere near as much. Maybe like 10 behind on that case. However, to have had these auxiliary queens and to be making more, this creep should really be extending. Look at uh, all the, like, you're not connecting your natural and your third. See how much easier it is to connect these? Because you have, like, this base here, all of this is surrounded, and then, boom, one plop over this creep tumor, and you're connected. This is much safer because it can be defended with queens. Knock this debris down. You have a nice little ramp, and your opponent's got a good concave. Don't get me wrong. But once you take this base and you're flooding down here, too, you can actually, like, he's got a concave that goes like this, and you're attacking in here and attacking here. So you're going to have, like, all of this area this entire semicircle and be in a much, much, much stronger position as you take your fourth base. If you have this as your third base, well, this is probably going to be your fourth. And this doesn't actually help you defend that third any better. Because if they're attacking here, well, you still have the access to this, whether you're here or here and here. If you take this as your fourth, now you've split and you're going to get torn apart by drops. So yeah, hopefully um, you're seeing like you work your way up here and then from here you grab this cluster and this cluster. You can actually park your army right here at the Zelnaga and it is designed 
to keep you safe in this little area so that you can't get like wed like someone ram their army in here and wedge between you that won't actually work because of the Selnaga tower what will be kind of hard is drops from this area but ultimately this is going to be your final base this is a five minute infestation pit this is what I mean when I say that we're mixing the styles a little bit too much. You're winning because you have good mechanics. You're winning because you have good macro and because you're just producing, outproducing your opponent. But tactical decisions like this are setting you back. Now let's look at why this is a mistake. Number one, it's five minutes. Number two, you've kind of shown yourself to be trying to play Sauron style Zerg, but you forgot to pull this out. You got the fast overlord speed and this was pretty delayed as a result. You don't have the creep spread you would need for a Sauron style Zerg. And you got this layer way too quick. So if this is a Sauron style Zerg, this infestation pit is twice as quick. Um, that's just too much technology and too much army. That's why your economy is in such shambles right now. Like you've got four queens, You've got two more in production. That's six queens, okay? That's 150 minerals each. So that is 300, 600, 900 minerals in the first five minutes spent on queens. And yeah, that can be fine if you are a Sauron style Zerg. As a technological Zerg, this is a huge mistake. So just pick one. And here we go, five minute load up. This is a little bit late. Usually it's between 4.30 and 4.45, but we'll give it uh, to the Terran's credit. Uh, you know, hey, at least he's hitting the timing somewhat. Some excess queens, a lot of energy floating around, but hey, we are keeping that money spent. Now, Bailey Nest is on the way. This is even more gas, but you only have one gas there, one gas there. You're taking this gas and none over there. So you've got Baneling Nest, you're about to get Hive Tech, you've got Infestation, and you haven't even started upgrades. So this immediately looks like Ultralisk. Now I know you're going to go Brood Lords, but this is not LBC. This is not Ling Baneling Corruptor. This is actually going to be a Ling Baneling Rush into Brood Lord Tech. You're really skipping Corruptors because Corruptor, like LBC, um, it has a flock of corruptors and you're flying in and you're actually using corruption on his buildings and destroying things like planetary fortresses which are extremely vulnerable to corruption and if you bring a couple of banelings in with that corruptor uh, you can take the SCVs out from repairing which is usually the only thing that can stop such a corruption ball from happening but because you've rushed through all these technologies you haven't really got any benefit from using them and that's a, a key mistake and here we go. Medivac going to be unloading. He is actually revealing what he's doing. And he's um, typically the Terran, like a smart Terran, which, you know, let's give it to him. Um, he wants to unload on the edge of the creep. Come in, scan, kill off as much creep tumor as he can and get away. Creep tumor is one of the most important things in a 2 one one build. You just can't let your opponent have a lot of it because if his bases are connected, he can defend your drops. 2 one one is a very drop heavy style. The fact is, he thought you had taken this base. He was hoping you had taken this base because this is where he thought that attack was going to be. But now he's about to find out that it's not there and watch his reaction. Nada. Nada. He now sees that there is nothing there. And he's a little off put. You can tell he doesn't actually know where to go. He's going to try and sneak past it and manages to. So imagine if this, uh, this right here had been right here or even like right in here having it here serves no purpose this would be where you'd put a spine crawler not a spore crawler and notice that your queen was attacking this weekend medevac you go for an inject and now you're no longer attacking medevac when you are repelling a drop your queen should be locked into that medevac nothing is more important than the medevac the lings are just there to die the marines try to get to the queens, but the queens can outrange them. The lings stop the marines from running forward. Once the medevac is down, the marines will die. But until that moment, you're losing this drop. 
and see this spore crawler finally getting a little bit of the action because he doesn't have the time to be as subtle as he was before but again much better range on this little little ledge right here <laughs> meanwhile he's just been taking a third base he is completely fine with you having this third base as opposed to this one you've got the one one upgrades coming he's got combat shields on the way with two ebos as well now your one one should typically be ahead of his but you're both late now you've got the uh the hive on the way which is contributing to your late upgrades now you've also got the spot well, let me ask you this are, are you ready income wise specifically gas income wise to make a spire no no you're not you're floating a lot of minerals without a macro hatch so the moment like let's say you were to like flood out nothing but uh mutas or corruptors in this case you're going to spend all your gas and have a bunch of minerals left over now if you have um just a few larvae you can't really flood those out on lings but you don't have gas to do anything else this is where macro hatcheries come in just have an extra one floating around because any ling baneling heavy style will require that and we did mention this is a drop heavy style right notice that he didn't really do that right he tried to attack here and then he tried to attack here and they were in sequence they were not simultaneous if this had been happening at the same time you'd be losing a third base right now and actually losing this queen you might actually lose this third what's what's going on bro you need to bring your queens in queens have to target this have to target the medivacs have to target the medivacs but see you don't have an army your army is only 20 some supply because the moment you took gas and you've kind of been trying to get your economy back in into a respectable position with this fourth base and all of this stuff you've now weakened your army because remember the triforce model right you can have any two of the three you started out with fast tech because like your biggest emphasis was like tech and you had a secondary emphasis on economy the weakened emphasis on army and then uh, somewhere like early on you flip flop to that to a emphasis on army and less emphasis on the economy and now you're trying to make up for the emphasis on the economy by taking a lot of bases and the whole time that this has been happening you've been trying to keep the gas alive so you see how like you've literally been trying to go in every category this is the type of game like the late macro game where the triforce model shines because it shows you that you're putting your eggs in too many different baskets the sauron style zerg which i believe is uh what you were trying to employ to get to lbc just doesn't hold this gas you keep like one of these guys in there not all three once metabolic boost finishes you move back into here and take a second one you then drop a baneling nest and at this point you should be on three bases when the baneling nest finishes you take a fourth base see how the baneling nest allows you to take that base it's very very simple then you would have to be like ready for the widow mines we just saw the widow mines employed in this battle so you would want some roaches of course you're going to need uh, at least a roach warren in case hellions are coming in case it's some kind of mech so you know you're already going to have that te technology it's just a matter of do you use that tactic the moment you see the widow mines and you're going a sauron style zerg you have the lings you have the banelings you have the roaches of course you're going to roll on in there and eventually because you know now you're holding all your bases and you're taking all these bases you're going to have like eight gas of uh income and once you're hitting that you can fly out as many mutas or corruptors as you want because what we're going to see as we're moving into the late game is that when you go for brood lords you can only make them once and if you make those you're not going to have the economy to support anything else here's the question is one ultra late game unit going to be able to kill all the weak marines that like are tier one units well it depends on the relationship right but typically starcraft is a game where one unit does not make or break a scenario it's about production not extreme micro row of one unit and we do have the lings of flooding in here going to knock these marines back but those widow mines still the queens are doing a good job targeting this medevac but had the uh, queens gone first we'd still have some lings alive they of course did not get the uh the the medevac that they wanted and these marines are still here to wreak as much havoc as they want and 
Queens are falling. No transfuses. No transfuses. Losing a lot of energy on that queen. So just not paying attention to the edges. And of course, creep spread is what he cares the most about. So he's going in, killing off your creep spread. And now gets your third base. So now you are behind. Now look. You're floating a thousand minerals, but not much gas. We predicted this a little bit earlier. Had you had a macro hatch, like this base right here, been a macro hatch, you'd be golden. But you are going for this greater spire. So you don't need the economy because you're going to have the technology. You can only get an advantage on army in one of two ways, by having a much better economy. So that like you're just flooding a marine after marine after marine into like killing his brood lords. Or if you have like technology where you have like um, battle cruisers up against his brood lords, like way faster than he would expect. You know what I mean? So the army is the ultimate thing that matters. And right now your army is quite a bit weaker than his. And you're not able to hold the things that you should be able to hold. So we got these drops coming in here. Actually, nope, he's going the other way. Corruptor is actually very good at repelling drops. That's one of the first things they start doing. And then as these begin to bulk up, you can take out Liberators with it, which are the counter to both Broodlords and Ultras in some cases. And uh, also, the Corruptors themselves, lovely ability right here, Caustic Spray. Kills off. Oh, good pickup there. I don't know if that was intentional, but hey, you got a pretty important medevac there. And very important that he is still targeting the medevacs with the queens and now the corruptors coming in because take a look the marines will be able to outkill the lings as long as the medevacs are there no transfuses no transfuses no transfuses please transfuse please transfuse dude you're microing the shit out of these things like i can see you like running them away there we go there's the transfuse all right you had to be aware that was happening all right cool so here's two more medevacs and he's just dropping you from every which angle now notice let's go take a look at some of your your overlords they're all parked here Got a couple over here, but really, these are the places where you should be putting your bases. If this is where your overlords are, these are the bases you should be taking. So you really have no fore notice whatsoever. So why are they on this side of the map? Your opponent's over here, your overlords are here. Your opponent's over here, your overlords are here. Like, he's not going to run across the edge to get to your base. Like, this is not a thing. Okay, um, Pythagoras said it best. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So if he's right here, he's going like this. Now, he's going to be smart and know that you're going to have probably these um, Zelnaga Towers. So he might would swing over here with some Hellions, kill this, and thinking this is going to be your third base, then bring this over, like it's a medevac, and then hit from over here. But he's definitely going to be cutting across this middle. So ideally, you want an Overlord here, an overlord here, an overlord here, an overlord here. You know, you don't have an overlord here or an overlord here. You can have a ling there and it'll do the same thing. Boom, overlord there, overlord there. And then no matter where he goes, you're going to spot it somehow, some way. Now, we've got the broodlords right here up front. And broodlords are awesome. They're great. But they're only good at a couple of things, and they're really bad at almost everything else. Broodlords are the ultimate late game unit for Zerg because it allows them to attack into fortified positions, which is something we couldn't really do except with Swarm Hosts. Swarm Hosts came in as kind of an earlier game um, Broodlord, but it had its own downsides. Um, some of the downsides to Broodlords is that unless you have an army underneath them, if your opponent gets under them, you lose the game. So what the Terran's going to want to do is get all his marines to kill off the ground army of the Zerg and then get underneath the Broodlords and kill these. In some leagues, players get distracted by the Broodlings. A good Terran can just stem past it, micro around it, do whatever it takes to get underneath it. In addition to this, Broodlords are extremely slow. So it makes you even more vulnerable to drop. So if you are going to be going for a Rude Lord um, composition, you should be throwing static defense up in all your bases, except maybe this one. You should also have some lings patrolling like right along in here, right along in here, and just making sure that you're not being dropped from any location. Of course, you're still going to want the overlords we talked about. You're going to want the Zelnaga Towers, but the lings are going to buy you 
uh, any kind of time to get your main gas composition into the position you need. Now, this will never, Brood Lords will never be used defensively. What you want to do is slowly take this part of the map. Bring some overlords with you. Ling Baneling drops. You can go here to his third. You can come over here. You can even wrap around like he's been doing. And while holding this position and daring him to come out, you can begin doing to him what Terran have done to us as Zerg for so long. Of course, the problem with that is, um, is you're still not killing your opponent. So why would you just park it there? Well, you've got to let your creep thread begin to catch up. This is why brood lords are typically employed off of a Sauron Zerk style. Number one, because of the heavy emphasis on queens, that means a heavier emphasis on creep spread. Creep spread means your hydralisks and stuff are going to be able to keep up with the brood lords. Your queens can get in for better transfuses because you know queen off creep, forget about it. And finally, because you're going to want to put spores and spine crawlers underneath of the brood lords, and as the brood lords move forward, so does the static defense. So really, you can think of the brood lords and the corruptors as a gas sink and then you dump your minerals into the static defense and by that point you've got a balance between um, gas and minerals at this point you don't have any kind of balance whatsoever and more importantly in not having that balance you have nothing to keep these brood lords alive let's see what happens notice that you are on 40 supply and you have brood lords this is not going to be enough underneath it banelings these should all be banelings. If you're going to do this small number of brood lords, these should all be banelings. Um, you also want to be much, much closer to your opponent when you morph the corruptors into brood lords. Um, just because getting these slow mugs over here, <laughs> forget about it. Now, the hellbats are definitely here to deal with the links. There's no way this guy is expecting. Yeah, yeah, he is definitely not expecting a greater spider. No brood lords have crossed his mind whatsoever. So he's going to be very, very surprised when he runs in here. Boom, there's the scan. He sees the brood lords. He knows he's got to do this. He's got to kill his opponent now. But notice this. Hellbats can't shoot up. Hellbats, however, can kill the fuck out of some broodlings. Vikings are already here, but that's not a lot to deal with. Both corruptors and brood lords. But notice that the... Um, These are not immediately targeting these. They are getting distracted by these broodlings. And actually, he's, uh, well, see, he's, he is killing off some of the weakened broodlings. He's also killing off some zerglings. What a good Terran would do is be stutter stepping. So, like, boom, here, stutter step, boom, to, like, this point, kill, and, like, try to get closer and closer to the broodlords with every attack. This just didn't happen in this battle. But at a higher level, that will happen. Now we've got the Banelings, and that is going to prevent the Terran from grouping up and doing such a thing. The Banelings are very uh, good deterrent at that. This is a great opportunity for some corruption. See how you're really, really put into a defensive posture? He could take like two more bases and there's nothing you could do to stop him. Your army is just way too slow. Also, if he were dropping from every which angle, like, you know, Gumiho or Nada or Innovation style, you would be getting torn apart. This army is just way too slow. See so how all your important units are in the back? Now, you are being smart and creating a little waypoint right here. Everyone's waiting. We've got 14 cream tumors in production, so that's always nice. A little bit too little, too late, and also, of course, Notice that right out here, this is literally against your base. Yeah, definitely going to want some more creep spread there. Now, here's the thing. You're going for Brood Lords. This is not a Corruptor build. This is a Brood Lord build. So let's just assume everything else I've said is trash. Let's assume that, you know, you are going to do the fast Brood Lord thing and, you know, Brood Lords are your unit of choice. Why go Zerg Flyer attacks? That only counts for when the... Broodlord throws the broodling out initially. Every attack after that is ruled by this thing, Zerg melee attack. So you're already getting plus more damage. What you didn't do, however, is get more 
health for the Broodlord. And remember, that's going to be the key factor because the Marines, their entire intention is to get underneath it. So having a little more armor uh, would definitely go a long way. So that might be a better upgrade for you in this scenario. And we are pulling the lings uh, into the Marines and the Banelings being very, very careful to stay away. But notice with all this extra gas, you still haven't got Baneling Nest. Or uh, Baneling Speed, rather. Now, this is a huge number of Vikings. Vikings are very easy to produce. They can be produced with a reactor. So it's an easy counter to take out Broodlords. You would need Infestors to deal with this, which means more gas, more economy. You don't have the ability to use. So, like... You can get the Broodlords, but you're never going to keep them alive, and you don't have the ability to remake them now. Your economy is in shambles. Look at this. You're at 25, 47, and 11, 19. You still don't have the gas that you would need for Broodlords. This is okay um, gas consumption for, like, Mutilus, but it's still, like, a little low. For Broodlords, it's really low. And even despite not having the uh, gas income to support the Broodlords, you definitely don't have the mineral income. And you've got this little rally set over here, but he is intent to be attacking. Zerg is the defensive race, and uh, especially when you're going Broodlords. You've kind of got to do offense through defense by slowly moving your static defense closer to your opponent and the Broodlords with it. All right, so good defense there. You did get the Lings and the Banelings to hit. Um, not killing off the Medivacs quite as quickly as I would have liked, but uh, that's fine. You just don't have enough Corruptors because you went for the Brute Lords. Now you are going to be running straight into this Planetary Fortress. I would love to see some Caustic Spray against this and then just get out. Instead, you're letting your Lings tank it straight to the face and instead choosing to, move to morph Brute Lords right where your opponent can see it. Not your finest moment right here, man. This can be killed with just Corruptors. Lings and Banelings rolling in, but again, they are not very good against a Planetary Fortress. Simply because of the SCVs. Now, the SCVs did die, but I want you to actually look at how much you lost here for this attack. Okay? So right now, we've lost 133 Lings and 3 Banelings. 163, well, it's not counting the uh, Banelings, he actually exploded. So rather than do that, let's uh, say he's at 12,274 um, resources lost at this point. He was at 10,000. So he lost 2,000, and his opponent lost about 2,000 as well. Now his opponent's also going to be losing a mining base, which plays its own role, but a lot of the resources you lost were gas. So your opponent's losing minerals, you're losing gas. I think we know which one's more valuable. Now here's an interesting choice. You're also going for Zerg Ground Carapace level 3. There's only two reasons you would get that. If Link counterattacks are your chosen style, which honestly this game you've not shown us for that, um, it makes it harder for your opponent's reinforcements to just kill the Lings. The Lings stay alive longer, they can do more damage, etc. Um... The alternative is Ultralisks. You are not doing either of those, therefore why get that instead of getting plus three weapons attack? Weapons attack would also benefit the Broodlings, which are launched from your Broodlords. So that is the upgrade you should have gone for instead of the flying attacks. Now the Corruptors are going to be swinging in here trying to kill off some of the Viking Marines also getting underneath the Corruptors. And again, we are just trading gas units essentially for free because we don't have enough of them and we've never built up to that deadly force. Now we are about 18 army supply ahead of our opponent, but it's all in useless technology. I think you still have a chance against this guy, but it's not because he's a good player. And here we go, you are going straight for the Marines. Marines not doing the best job at splitting. Instead, he's just like got this one little segment that he's running away, leaving a few of the other ones behind. So not the best splits we've ever seen. 
And, well, he's going to pick up, because he is away from the Corruptors. You allow the Corruptors to get distracted by the Vikings, which means he can pick up the Medivacs. I would definitely try to stay on top of the Medivacs with those Corruptors, but ultimately you are going to win this game. And it had nothing, I repeat, nothing to do with fucking Broodlords, bro. It's all good though, man. Every game is a learning experience, like we said at the beginning of this. This is like, you know, your first foray into the super, super late game. Of course, you tried to do it in eight minutes. In like five minutes, you were getting an infestation pit. So slow it down a little bit, bud. But other than that, man, great game. You are learning so much. I am so proud of you, dude. Thanks for the replay. I'll see you next time, guys. If you want to be cast on Newbie Tuesday, if you want free coaching, uh, you know, once a week, sometimes I do it twice a week, just send your replays in to the uh, email address on the screen right now. It is cheesyshaft at gmail.com. Link is in the description. If you really want to help support this channel, please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and then visit us on Patreon. Link also in the description. We have a ton of rewards that you guys can begin earning right now. Until next time, shout out my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.